we are on our way out of Jolly Harbor, past those lovely sailboats on the horizon, where you probably can't see it, is Montserrat. Volcano, an active volcano. And with us on this voyage to, well, maybe not Georgia now, we were looking at Florida, depending on weather, is Kent. Say hello, Kent. Hello. Carl. Hello. And Captain C Money back there. We'll actually let him drive the boat a little bit. That's a pretty day with fluffy little clouds around, but every once in a while one builds up a bit. So when they start doing that, it's a squall underneath. We've got some rains coming toward us. Wonderful thing about the electronics here is we can find that on the radar, mark it like it's a boat, and then it'll tell us which direction it's heading, how fast it's moving, what our CPA or closest point of approach will be, and when that will be. And it was moving pretty good, and it's only three miles out. It looks like it's diminishing a little bit, so the choice was made to kick the engine on and get out of its way. The uh, other choices would be to, you know, bring the mainsail down, get less sheet up in the air, but that takes time and we lose forward speed when we're doing that, so engine's easy. Yeah, we're gonna beat this one. There's another one behind that one. And it's picked up speed from 15 to 20 knots now, so. Both of those cells are behind us now, so we're in the clear. And they don't look like much, I know, but I have a healthy respect for them because when we were sailing out, Charlie was blowing and I thought, oh, I'm gonna get a little rain. And got close to one of those things, the winds picked up fierce. And all you can do is steer up toward the wind to get the load off the sails. The boat just keeps leaning over more and more and more, and I'm steering up more and more. And then all you're doing is driving into the damn thing, so you hope to bring the boat speed down and unload those sails. So getting out of it is a lot nicer and you do less damage to the rig. Maybe I broke Charlie's sail on the way out. Engine off. Back to silence. Morning routines. Pick the flying fish off the deck and clean up the solar panels. We take the instruments out of their nighttime display mode. And also, Go around the boat and check all the standing rigging, make sure everything's got the tensions we want, the blocks, the tackles, make sure there's no hardware laying on the deck. Keep an eye open. But most importantly, don't forget why you're out here. End of another day, 159 miles in our first 24 hours. The weather's looking beautiful for tomorrow too. End of day two, another beautiful sunset. About six more days to go, and the weather's supposed to hold just like this. And the really good news is, I haven't been seasick. I mean, I'm doing a little ginger. I'm drinking sodas and ginger ale. I take Dramamine twice a day, half a pill now. And um, I try not to. I've been queasy twice, but I kind of get it in my head of don't. You know what it is for me? It's just easy for me to just throw up. And I think that comes when you're feeling sick. You know, it's like, hey, you got a stomach bug, then get rid of it, you know? But with seasickness, it doesn't work that way. Fighting it, you know, is actually fine. Because I, I was feeling queasy once, and I was like, uh, no, just fight it. Went away. So, maybe it's in my head, too. A lot of things are. Okay, well, this is day five, six, something like that. You lose time on a boat, because it doesn't really make any difference. You just do the same thing the next day. But... Uh, my seasickness not been a problem. Now the seas are only like a meter on this trip, not, not like six meters on the other trip. So that's good. I've just been a little nauseous every once in a while, so I'm still testing things. And one of the things that I haven't given up yet is sinus flush. Now, if you're a child, you need to leave the room before you see this. No, you'll think it's funny, but your parents need to leave, okay? Because watch. <laughs> now, it's like diving into the ocean because it's salt water. And if you're really good, you snort it up and it comes out your mouth too. You want to watch that? No, we'll spare you that. No, we won't. Okay, but it does. You will be able to breathe well. It's like being held underwater in salt water for a while. And so then I'm using a, a, a sinus spray to, to keep everything clear because there's passages to your ears. And I'm also use an ear drop and, and uh, clean my ears well. So maybe that has helped some too. Who knows? You know, but the trick is 
don't give up. If you get seasick once, it doesn't mean you're going to get seasick the 40th time. So don't give up. Just keep going at it. these things ginger chews everybody recommends the ginger yeah I like these things because they, they melt really slow under your tongue and I, I really think they help of course this is a candy and I'm a test population of one which is anecdotal which just really means it's not worth anything you gotta try this stuff out for yourself and find what works for you and I got some eardrops too this is kind of like hydrogen peroxide it dissolves the ear wax so make sure you don't get a buildup and you don't have to do this one every day this is like once every, well, whenever you get a buildup of wax in there. You let it sit for several minutes. Take a nap. And incidentally, the other day when I was scuba diving, I was able to clear my ears much easier because I had been doing this for a couple weeks already. So it may be part of the trick. You thought it was going to go all the way through, didn't you? Look at that. Clean as a whistle. Pancakes for breakfast. It's about the only meal I'm qualified to cook. And I'm reading this nutrition book now. I should be eating pancakes. Never stop trying because there's always something else in the bag of tricks. Don't give up. That's the answer. Shoot this. Secret weapon for seasickness. <laughs> no, I don't think they work, but they're fun as hell. <laughs> The blue dye in the bottom gives you an artificial horizon, and let's see. Okay, it's a little slow, but yes, it does work. But can your dignity survive this? That's the question. Now, Charlie had some good advice too, <laughs> right? So, what was it you told me? The best way to get over seasick is just man the fuck up. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's just a, that it, sexy. It just takes the right face for him. That's all that you need. <laughs> This is so weird. Yeah. Do you think they'd work? I think it'd be too busy watching the damn Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. The question is, would they uh, stay on your face while you heave over the side to barf? You know, that's the question. Yeah, they're all pretty good. There you go. That makes it work. <laughs> super cool and su super nerdy combined, you right. know, all in one. <laughs> Another little storm off to the side. This one we just made a tack to go around in. Yeah, we'll get past that. She likes this. Then we'll tack the boat back onto our course. Change directions. Radar thinks it has. Radar thinks it has. Yeah, change directions. Finally, five days we get a little spray over the bow. That's nice. This is called beating when you're heading more into the waves than with them. You know, we're been sailing at a reach for days now. It's lovely. The waves come along the side of you, they raise you up and set you back down. Beating is when you actually are going to have to slog into the wave itself. And this beating is not bad at all. You're still making good speed into it. You know, it gets heavier and the boat starts slowing down and pitching a lot more. And it gets very uncomfortable. But this is very pleasant. We're just under two days out from Nassau and the weather now says we stop there and wait two days for a storm front to pass by and then we can catch the trades again and head on up north. We're going to uh, Jacksonville area. Well, now, yeah, that's the line. That's, of course, to our waypoint, the dotted line. Oh. Tell you what, if you want to learn to sail, I highly recommend sailing with Charlie. And do it for a week or so because that's the way you'll get all kinds of experience. Sometimes they just form right on top. As I was saying, sometimes they just form right on top of you, so we're heating too. Uh, now, this is hope too. The jib's out on this side and the main's on this side, so the main wants to sail up and the jib wants to sail back off, so you basically stall the boat. Good boat. Good boat. Sorry for those of you at home.
And the wind dies. Out of one, into the next. And we're heaved to again, just the opposite. The stay cell's out on this side, the main's out on the port side. Come back out, if you just turn into it, the main will come across. There it comes. A little boost from the engine helps, too. There it is. Okay, just came off heaving to. The thing is just turn the boat and everything goes back to the right side. And I should point out, too, that you can heave, too, with just the, uh, the head cell. The main cell can be down completely. And then you just use the rudder to counteract it. So the head cell, once you bring you off, and the, you set the rudder to turn you back into it, it stalls the boat. Uh, Darwin's got his fill for it today, too. We both got our showers. Plenty of dull moments, but a few exciting ones to make up for it all. And thanks to Betsy for the frog dogs, it does get chilly after a while. You want to miss that? Yeah. All right. Our afternoon rains are here. And a quick little tack to get out of its way, and now oh, it's almost gone. Just never gets old. Now, this is an interlude here. You remember I left Seeker sitting nicely at her dock there at Three Forks Harbor in Muskogee, Oklahoma. But fortunately, I have a lot of friends because there was a lot of rain, and Seeker came up. Oh, I think it was at 19 feet, came up to 27 feet, so an 8-foot rise in the river there, and she floated off the dock. Actually, the wharf went underwater, and the lines were pulling her over onto the side. So, fortunately, uh, Brandon made a phone call, and Betsy got some word out, and we've got some guys out there helping move around and adjust those lines and put her back where she needed to be. So, many thanks to Dave, Brian, and Dustin, and Alexandria for getting out there and helping out. The dock, if you can see, is just coming back out of the water line, so if we don't get any more rain, hopefully she'll be dry when I get back there and we can finish up on those sails. But many thanks to Seeker Crew. Those guys are awesome. That's night watching that uh, blinky white light there on the right. That's a Mardi Gras cruise ship. And we can see her off and on through the sails. And that orange thing, that beautiful thing, that is the moon is getting ready to set. Sorry for all the sail lines and stuff in the way. Gorgeous from here. Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras. Sailing vessel Osprey. Yeah, it looks like we are on a close point approach of less than one half mile. We are right off your bow. Didn't know if you can make a turn to port just a few degrees, give us a little extra room. We are close hauled right now. Do you want to meet alter to port? No, starboard to starboard, please. If you could just turn a little bit to port, I'd appreciate it, because we are close hauled, trying to make the cut. Okay, we'll pass the starboard to starboard. No problem, we are to port. Thank you, have a great evening. Try to hold the boat still, damn it. about every pothole out there. There she is, Mardi Gras. 2,000 people that just got out of our way. <laughs> and you'd have to be here to see the size of that thing. That is huge. And at night, cruise ships are just terrible to figure out which way they're going. There's all those lights blot out their navigation lights, which I suppose they have in there somewhere. It's like 3 or 4 a.m. she lit up like that. Well, the thing I wish I could show you is the stars. The Milky Way is just spectacular. After the moon goes down, beautiful. Instead, I can show you Charlie back there. Wave, Charlie. And there goes Mardi Gras. We'll be seeing her even after she goes over the horizon. She leaves a little glow like a little city out there. Nice thing about night watch, it doesn't mean you have to be awake. It means you have to wake up, well, depending on where you are. We're doing every 20 minutes now because we're in a traffic zone. And hey, you, twice a night, maybe you run the engine to charge the battery up because the autopilot's doing the steering. Love autopilot. So you check this, make sure it's clear all around, check AIS. Bad wake up too, is it? Okay, it's another sunset. We're supposed to be going that direction, but we're going this way so the crew can see the sunset. That's so pretty. How pathetic is that, right? Captain privilege. This is the entrance to Nassau. We're going in oh, right there. See the markers out there? And down that way is Disneyland. One of our jobs today is dump all of our fresh water out here in the port and add 
found some newer stuff. Now this will slosh the bottom of the tanks out. Also messes with Charlie who's down below. And it gives me an idea about stability because we're gonna have to do this on Seeker to test her stability. It's how easily she rolls. It's amazing what you can do with just one person on a 48 foot boat. I'll do that once I get all the mastheads up on Seeker so she has as much weight as she's going to get up high. So how much does that leave you in the bottom of the tank that we can't get to her unless it can suck it up the tube? Well, it's good to be like an emergency reserve over here. We know we can take this cap off and get, get, you know, get more water. Yeah. Never a bad idea to have a little more water on board. Uh, port Control sailing vessel Osprey. Good afternoon, Dan. Yeah, we are exiting the harbor uh, at Hawkfish. Make sure we have clear traffic. Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, thank you very much. We are outbound from Nassau, Bahamas. It's been a wonderful two days of stuffing my gut with uh, fried conch and uh, Maui Maui and a, and a burger that I should not have eaten this last day, but I figure, hey, if you're gonna go sailing, you test it, right? So, it's been a wonderful time here. And then uh, should be another two, three days to uh, St. Mary's, Georgia. And uh, that is checking out because the, the entrance here is so narrow, you don't wanna be trying to go out while a cargo ship or uh, cruise liner is coming in. This actually is a uh, entry into the port because we got the commercial bits and look, there's, if you're gonna sink a boat, oh, it's over there. You go over there and sink your boat, okay? There's, okay, wave. Frankly, this is one of the cleanest harbors I've seen, but you know, it would help people, people watch the trash it blows into the water. It's like a local fuel tender. Lots of catamarans out here. Well, you can either come out here in one of those and another lifetime, or you can start with something a little more affordable. There, fix your upper. That's a pirate ship stuck in there. Yeah. Okay, if you're a little less adventurous but still need to get out, you can always take, you know, a bigger boat. I am admiring their deck cranes. Firing her up. Ah, these are my people out here on the end. You know, for those of you that are buying old lighthouses and fixing them up, bravo. Somebody's got to save these things. It's, it's just if nobody does that well. Wouldn't that be a cool bed and breakfast in it? Obviously it survived a few hurricanes. Well, that is looking like a lot more calm sailing. These fluky winds. We're rocking along about eight knots. There is another gorgeous sunset. Look at that, we've already seen the sunset. Shut up, look at it, might be the last one. And there comes the moon, and there's what we were running away from. The storm front all along that edge. Look back there, you must have been in it already. Look at that. So there's a cruise ship over there on the horizon. That's what you see at the left. Well, the wind died this morning, so we're just puttering along, waiting for it to fill back in, but look at that. You want to go fast? 166 feet long, doing about 31 knots. There's a high-speed catamaran. Look at that thing push. And look at that tail on her. The more individualized the nation, the more citizens enjoy their life. So Charlie is going to go back to an all-natural boat. I like it better than keeping the bright work up. They call this bright work. All it is is varnish over wood. If you want to keep it pretty, you got to sand it down every year and put another coat on. If you want to do more things, you got to just let it go back to being wood. I'll get it all done. I'm just going to follow the shade. That's the trick. And the book I'm listening to is Rational Optimist by Matt Ridley. of human lives will eventually resume. You are far from 
the last of the Bahamas. You know, I gotta say it again, I'm so glad I don't give up easy. The seasickness, the bad days working on the boat, all those things. Just every once in a while, you just gotta suck it up. Maybe Charlie's right. Man the fuck up. Yeah, look at this poor guy. They are amazing to watch, though. Circle of life. Okay, the wind is filled in nicely. We're making six and a half knots, and the best part is we're headed uh, to the Gulf Stream. About two hours, we'll slip into the Gulf Stream, and it will drag us north at a, maybe another knot and a half. We'll see. This program is Navionics. There's Freeport there. There's West Palm Beach over there. That courses us, and we're going this direction. If I pull up Predict Wind, I can look at ocean data, and that'll give me the current. There we are entering the Gulf Stream, and it says it's running at, oh, 1.9 knots. Let's be down here in this corner. That's the boat speed up there. You don't see that very often. Faster boat speed. Faster boat speed, yeah. Welcome to night watching near Florida. Back to the shipping lanes. And there's lights for two more of them that aren't even on AIS yet. And there's looking over our bow at uh, Disney. Beautiful sunrise. That's bedtime. And back to no wind and flat seas and we're motoring, but something exciting. That catamaran way out there on the horizon somewhere spotted a sunken boat. And so he gave his uh, coordinates and time. So we're gonna go look at it again. Get new coordinates and time and then the Coast Guard will have the drift speed of it. Oh, there it is. Just barely see the hole poking through the water there. It's upside down. So he said it was a sailboat. And his suggestion is that maybe it's a Haitian boat. And that could be because Haiti's that way and Florida's that way. And if you lived in Haiti, if I lived in Haiti, I'd try to get out. Even at this range and this flat of sea, you can see that hole just disappears out of sight completely occasionally. Okay. Well, that's not but, what, 16, 18 feet? There's a mast, there's a tarpaulin sail, flat bottom, got bowsprit. Oh, she's got a dagger board. What's that say on her? Okay. It's okay. kind of sad, isn't it? You know, if we had Seeker, we could write that sucker and tow her. I think that uh, seagulls claim salvage rights. <laughs> Well, I set my alarm to come up and see a lunar eclipse. I'm going to see a site, but it's not going to be a lunar eclipse. Now, what's interesting, it's not what's out front of us, it's what's behind us that's actually catching up to us. Okay, the one out front, it's not even there. It's the one behind us, and it's coming this way. Let the mizzen out a little bit. Mizzen coming out. 30, 31. 31 miles an hour already, huh? Yeah, sure, no problem. Then we're gonna rip that out of the deck. Here comes the rain. Now yeah, we came right in between these two cells here. That long one, the little dot. Yep, and then we have some more unorganized stuff out here at the port. And the wind is off our port beam. Yeah. So we're gonna keep an eye on that for a little bit. up clear and calm. Beautiful. Look at that. And that. We are back. Oh, there's the U.S. nuclear submarine fleet. Oh, wait a minute. Not that one. That over there. That explains why the buoys are so big. You know, the Navy has to be able to find them. Fix her up or I bet you can buy it for a dollar. That's why we're here. There's a travel lift. We're going to get pulled out and put on the hard. Come here, yeah. Now this is Jason and this, I got to back up, is what Jason bought. And it is a fixer-upper. It's kind of like, uh, what's that couple in, um, Shit Happens. Oh, shit. oh no, Shit, shit Happens. Shit sorry, happens. sorry. <laughs> sorry for you kitties at home. This is Jason's other project. He is rebuilding this thing. Bought it used. Look at that. Tearing out all the fiberglass. You put two layers of fiberglass in, you said? Yes, sir. On the outside? Yes, sir. Man, you do nice work. This is what I call craftsman. And you know what you got to do to be a craftsman like this? 
You have to work as an IT manager, isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's even using my favorite pink foam. So you put that in and you're gonna lasso with that? Yeah. Is it stiffener? Is that what that is? Uh, no, because I'm uh, I'm so tired of trying to sand that out of there. I'm <laughs> covering it up. <laughs> Let's hide it. And look at this, he built the center console too. It's out of, looks like ply, and then glassed it together, rounded the edges. You do beautiful work, man. Charlie and I are walking around the boat yard here. Look at this. That is ABS pipe, and they are making a boat out of that thing. It's like, wow, it's almost an inch and three quarters thick, probably. Isn't that amazing? Bolted together. Clever. Bionic Gypsy, love that. This is a steel boat. Oh yeah. Lots of people out here working on boats. They're redoing a weld line up there. Yeah, it's got a lot of fairing compound on it. That's what you do when you want your steel boat to look like a pretty boat. You smooth it out with a lot of Bondo. You know, I think it's boat people that are innovative. That is a trailer that he took the axle off of and put it up on top of his fifth wheel. He drives around the United States delivering people's boats. And this is a cool idea. Rocky, the guy that owns this place, St. Mary's boat services builds these you put the boat in it obviously and then he built that contraption has its own power system hydraulically uh, run and it just picks those cradles up moves around and sits them down where he needs them so he can take boats and stick them where they're really in the way of other boats but it's not a big problem because he's got it on that easy to lift cradle yeah what a wooden boat not me lift it up so we can put that lift it up up uh i see yeah, yeah. Arriba. Arriba, there you go, yeah. There you go. And that's uh, Rocky up there on the travel lift. <laughs> right behind the keel, that's perfect. Back of the strap, center of the ladder. Back of the forward strap is right at the chain plate. Notes to future Charlie. Mostly, a lot of these fiberglass boats around here have this. This is a blister where water gets in there and starts causing trouble. It makes a little bump and it'll get sanded down, ground out, and refilled with uh, fiberglass. Blisters aren't deep, they're just in the gel coat. Okay, this is why you maintain a steel boat. Suppose you could build a boat out of nickel. Cost you a fortune. It's kind of like unbirth, isn't it? Yeah, but they do look bigger out of the water. They do. That's what she said. <laughs> Well, Darwin and I are back from our trip and we had a wonderful time. I tell you what, you don't have to go far, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you gotta get out of your house and see the world. It's a wonderful place. Take care guys, and if you're making something in your shop, send us a picture. What'd you make today?
Thank you.